every stronghold sickness and poverty must for the be. devil is for the devil is
this morning. I woke up ready to serve and praise God today. Give him everything I got. No limits. No limits. No boundaries. No boundaries. I see all around me. All around me. No limits. No limits. No boundaries. No boundaries. I see all around me. All around me. If you're ready to give God some praise, you can sing this with us. No simple. No limits. No limits. No boundaries. No boundaries. I see it. I see it. All around me. All around me. No limits. No limits. No boundaries. No boundaries. I see it. I see it. All around me. All around me. No limits. No limits.
Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. To believe it and you got to see it for yourself. Nobody else can do it for you. Holy Lord, my we territory. Enlarge, enlarge, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Oh, proceed with the praise team. Oh, you got to make it personal. Hallelujah. Enlarge my territory. Think about it, praise team. Enlarge my territory. Make it personal. That's no restrictions, <laughs> no limit. Hallelujah. Enlarge my territory. Oh, enlarge my territory. Yes. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. No limit. No boundaries. <laughs> Lord, hallelujah to what? Enlarge my territory. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As we prepare, hallelujah, to go boldly before the throne of grace, ask the Lord to enlarge your territory. At this time, we'll have our very own deacon, Morgan, if you could come up boldly before the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Enlarge our territory, enlarge my territory. Make it personal. He's a faithful God. He's able to do that. So we thank you, Lord. As I go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, Father God, of our trespass as we forgive those that has trespassed against us. Now, Father God, I ask you right now, Father God, that you saturate this atmosphere with your presence, Father God. That you do what you set out to do, Father God. That you touch hearts and minds, Father God, to receive what it is you have for them, Father God. We thank you for being faithful, Father God. You woke us up this morning, Father God. You woke us up in our right mind, Father God, and you brought us to this appointed time, Father God, so we're thankful. We're thankful. We thank you for the traveling mercies, Father God. So we ask, Father God, that you just be with us today, Father God, as we give you all the honor, the praise, and glory that you deserve, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you love the sinful world, that you sent your only begotten Son to die for us, for our sins, Father God. 
and we're thankful. We thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life for us as sinners. And we thank you that you got up on the third day. We're thankful that you got up on the third day, you got up with all power. And we thank you that you're at the right hand with the Father. And one day you're coming to get your people, the righteous, to live with you for eternally. So we thank you, Jesus, for being our Lord and our Savior. And Father God, I ask, Father God, that the speaker today, Father God, that you use him in a mighty way, Father God. That your word go forth and it do what you have called for it to do, Father God. That a sinner be saved, Father God. That a, someone sick be healed, Father God. That someone that's shackled with sin be delivered, Father God. Let your word have its way, Father God. We thank you, Father God. You said that the paralegic man that wanted healing, Father God. You said your sins are forgiven. So we know that we need to be, be saved. Sin, uh, our spiritual healing, Father. We need a spiritual healing. And then we get the physical healing, Father God. So we thank you for making us whole. For making us whole, Father God. So let your word go forth, Father God. Bless the speaker, Father God. And allow their hearts and minds to receive what it is you have for us, Father God. And when it's all said and done, let a sinner be saved. Let it go down in Jesus' name and come up a new creature and speak it in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance, Father God. So we thank you for what you're going to do, Father God. We thank you. And it is so because in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of y'all are thankful on today? Hallelujah. Thankful for the life he's given you. Thank you for he died on the cross for our sins. Hallelujah. Thankful, hallelujah, for being God and God all by himself. Hallelujah. No limit. No boundaries. No boundaries. I see increase. In spite of my circumstance, in spite of the restrictions, I see increase. <laughs> reject you hallelujah and make you think you got some boundaries and restrictions hallelujah but with God on your side hallelujah I see no boundaries I see no restrictions hallelujah there's no limits in God no boundaries believe it people of God 
Hallelujah. At this time, hallelujah, we'll have our very own Minister Chandler. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll bring to you our scripture on today. Let's greet her with the words of praise the Lord. Jesus. Increase all around us. Amen. If you see increase all around you, put your hands together. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I see increase all around APA. I see what the hand of God is doing in this house. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're going to ask everyone to please stand if you uh, can, if you will. We're gonna do. We're gonna have our responsive reading. It will be found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Now, this is a responsive reading. We're gonna read uh, chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. I will read the first verse, congregation the second, the next, and then we will read the last one together. Amen. amen. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of the Lord reads, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Yeah. And all these blessings shall come on thee and, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed Bless shall, shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kin, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall uh, be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Thank you, they shall come out against thee one way and flee uh, before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he will bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself. And he, shall, and he have sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. All the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy ground, and in the, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open up to thee his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and thou shalt all the work in thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them together. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You all might be asking, right? What are we so excited for? Amen. What are we so thankful for? Hallelujah. Well, I will bring to you our very own Minister Eric Allen, and he will bring to you what we believe here at Appleton Pentecostal Assembly. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Amen. The question was asked, what do we believe? The question was asked, what do we believe here at Appleton Pentecostal Assembly? We believe that the Bible was the inspired infallible word of God written by holy men of old and they were moved by the Holy Ghost we believe in one God who is eternal infinite in power holy in nature attributes and purposes as well as omniscient and omnipresent 
We believe that he was revealed to us as father in creation, as son in redemption, and his Holy Spirit is in his confident grace that never leave those who trust him. Ah, we believe in Jesus. He dwells in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, for it pleased the Father, in him should all the fullness dwell. We believe in the virgin birth. Jesus was both human and divine. He was God manifested in the flesh. We believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. We believe that he ascended on high and that his spirit, the Holy Ghost, which was poured out in Jerusalem over 22,000 years ago. Amen. It's that same spirit. Look at your neighbor and say that same spirit. Amen. It's here. Hallelujah. That same spirit right, ah, that is filling the hearts of those who diligently seek him today. Ah, we believe in baptism by the water of immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is initially the evidence but speaking in tongues as the spirit gives the utterance. This constitutes the new birth. <laughs> We believe in a whole living, a holy and sanctified life. We believe in divine healing, communion, and foot washing. Uh, we definitely believe in the glorious catching away of the saints when Jesus returned in the clouds in glory to take his people, the righteous to heaven, to live with him eternally. Now, therefore, now therefore, uh, therefore, therefore, our chief aim is to glorify our Savior, which is in Christ Jesus, who gave himself that he may be redeemed from all iniquity and purify himself to a peculiar people, zealous in good work. Oh, Oh, this is what we believe. Hey! Pentecostal. Hallelujah! 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 He said, now therefore our chief aim is to glorify our Savior. Hallelujah. Let's exalt his name. Hallelujah. Together. Hallelujah. That's our chief aim, people of God. That's why we're here, to glorify our Savior, hallelujah. Not to glorify me, not to glorify our pastor, but it's to glorify our Savior, hallelujah, our chief aim. When you say our chief aim, that's our number one focus, hallelujah. That's our goal, hallelujah, is to glorify our Savior, hallelujah. Hallelujah, at this time we will have our very own Elder Chandler, he will bring to you our announcements on today. Let's greet Elder Chandler with the words of praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our chief aim. Hallelujah. That's right, Elder. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> I was you. glad when they said unto me, come, let us go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, I bring you greetings uh, from our, our own pastor. And, and, and First Lady Raglan. And if this is your first, second, or third time here visiting with us, because you could have been anywhere else, but you decided to stop right here. Hallelujah. Uh, if it's your first or second or third time uh, joining us, we ask that you stand. Hallelujah. And, and give us your name and let us know who invited you. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Lanye got baptized in Jesus' name last week. Yes, amen. Amen. Tim, this is my second time here. Hi, my name's Dave. Uh, I was invited. This is my first time here. I was invited, invited here by my brother in Christ, Jason. 
My name is Jason, and I'm a return visitor. Amen, amen, amen. And once again, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And on behalf of, of our own Pastor Raglan and, and Lady Raglan, we, we, we thank you for coming. And we hope that this is not your last time, that, that you do come again. Hallelujah. Do we have any birthdays for the month of June? Any birthdays for the month of June? Hold on. There we go. There we go. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have any anniversaries for the for the month of June? All right. All right. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, um, we do have our own sister, Jessica, who has a special announcement for us today. Let's greet her with the words of praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We on June 10th, everybody say June 10th. June 10th. We have an out of school second Andrew bash. Right. So it will be at JC Park, JC's Park. Oh, it'll be the first? Oh, the first. So make sure everyone be there. <laughs> um, at JC's Park from 12 to 4. Um, and on the next Sunday, it will be like you Sunday, so everyone can wear their sneakers and be dressed to impress. And then after that, we'll be going to the Juneteenth. Thank you. Ah, this is a powerful weekend. Hallelujah. Say it again. Yes. We are wearing our T-shirt on Sunday, next Sunday, because we'll be leaving here and going to Juneteenth. If you have, yes, if you have any additional questions, if you can, uh, we will address your questions after service. Amen. If you have any additional questions, we will address your questions after service. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will be able to see Elder Dennis Chandler. Amen. If you have any additional questions, and if he doesn't know the answer, he will refer you to the right person. Amen. 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 And that concludes our messages and our greetings for this Sunday morning. We'll turn you back over to Lady Raglan. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap, amen, for being God and God all by himself. Hallelujah. Do y'all believe it? That's just, that, that might be good for me, but let's give the Lord a hand clap for being God and God all by himself. Self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we will have our very own trustee, Sheila. Hallelujah. And she will come today to receive our tithe and offering. Amen. Trustee Sheila. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again, somebody. Hallelujah. It's tithe and offering time. Hallelujah. The praise team was singing early, enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Enlarge my territory. How do you enlarge your territory? Besides asking God, you, t you give your tithes and your offering, and God will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that is not, you can't even have room enough to receive. Amen. Amen. If you are writing out a check, you can write a check out to Appleton Pentecostal Assembly or APA. If you are giving by cash app, it's dollar sign APA Church. And if you are giving on the app, yes, APA has an app. It's APA Church. You can go to the heart sign, the giving um, uh, icon on the app, and you can give that way as well. Or you can just put it in an envelope, and then um, when you come through the line, you can drop it in the, in the basket. Amen? Amen. If you could all please rise. Hallelujah. God love a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. Hallelujah. 
If you could take your offering and raise it in the air, we'll say a brief word of prayer. If y'all would pray with me, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for this day, hallelujah. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence on today, Lord God. We just thank you. We love you, Lord God, hallelujah. We thank you for all that you're doing, all you've done, and all you are about to do, Father God. We thank you for the blessings you have on our jobs and in our lives and all the favor that you've given unto us, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, to continue to bless us. Bless those that are about to give, Lord God. Bless those that are not able to give, Lord God, so that they may be able to give next time father god and we ask all these things in jesus mighty 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 name amen and amen at this time if you could follow the the ushers hallelujah over to Lady Raglan. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We do have we do have one additional one announcement. We do have um um, Juanita Syriakis, her birthday is in June. Amen. And she and her family brought cake. And so we 
Oh yeah, we she um her family they brought cake and we're we're so we're gonna have sister little one Nita evangelist one Nita stand up, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all just don't know, y'all just don't know, <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a good thing to have a praying mother, Hallelujah. It's a good thing to have a praying mother because she wasn't expected to see this birthday, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. It's a good thing to have a praying father, huh? She wasn't expected, Hallelujah, to see this birthday, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. A praying pastor, Hallelujah. A praying church, Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all seen her, but she walk around here. She wasn't expected to walk, hallelujah. But God, but God, but God. And she give people hugs, hallelujah. But God, but God. She is glad, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're thankful for that, hallelujah. So thank you. There are refreshments after service, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we're going to have our praise team, hallelujah. Go forward, hallelujah, until our pastor comes back, hallelujah. Praise team in the name, hallelujah, hallelujah. I think it's catching them off guard, but do y'all know that song, Thank You, Lord, hallelujah, because we're thankful on today, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's meditate on that. Thank you. Thank you. 
y'all know the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name out there. Repeat after me. Say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Come on, y'all can say it with us. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, everybody, say that. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Save you, save you, save you, save you, save you. Feel me, feel me, feel me, feel me, feel me. Feel me, feel me, feel me, feel me, feel me. Feel me, feel me, feel me. Feel me, 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 I worship you and adore I worship and adore Just wanna say thank you Just wanna 
Jesus, 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 Jesus,
And although a child dedication does not save the child, it is a way of saying to the Lord, we want the Lord to bless our house. We want the Lord to bless our child. A child dedication is the act of giving back to God the gift that he has given unto them as the parents. It is the act of worship and it is the act of thanksgiving. It is the act of trust and commitment. A baby dedication is viewed as a confirmation between, also a confirmation between the parents and the church that they will ra help raise the child in the fear of the Lord with godly ways and unto understanding godly principles until the child is such age that they can make the profession with their own mouth and they can accept the Lord as their personal savior themselves. The dedication of a child is taught throughout the word of God. And we learn it very early when Moses, when God, Moses came out of Egypt and God told Moses to sanctify all of the firstlings. And we also learn in the book of 1 Samuel that Lady Raglan will read shortly. It is when the prophet Samuel's mother gave her son. And we also learn it through our very own Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When he was born, his mother took him and his father took him to be dedicated unto the house of the Lord. Again, I say, dedication does not save, but is a confirmation and a commitment between the parents and the church to help raise this child in godly principles and watch out for this child and to ensure that this child has everything they need to live a healthy and a prosperous life. Amen? Amen. And at this time, oh, he loves to move around, doesn't he? At this time, the mother has her child, and what we're going to ask, first I want this father to hold the child. As the father gave seed unto the mother, we're going to ask the father, which is Brother Lee, Cam Lee, to hand the child over to the mother. Sister Valentina Scott, then we'll hand the child over into the hands of the ministry of Appleton Pentecostal Assembly. And from the hands of Minister Chandler, the child will move to Elder Chandler. And from Elder Chandler, he will move over to the pastor. I breathe the word over on the young man. We're going to ask Elder Chandler to just pray for the occasion on this day. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for this gift, the gift of this child. Father God, we ask, Father God, right now that you bless. Bless this child, bless this family. Hallelujah. Father God, we also ask that you give us the knowledge, give us the strength. Give us the courage, Father God. Give us the, uh, 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 the ability, Father God, hallelujah, to help uh, wean this family, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, it's, it's always so said that it takes a village to raise a family. Father God, as we stand instead, Father God, we ask, Father God, that you, that, that you give your blessings, Father God, so that we can lead this child in the, uh, in the way that he should bring, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to ask Lady Raglan to read, amen, Samuel, 1 Samuel, for our hearing. Praise the Lord. We will be reading for 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 24 through 28. And it reads, 
And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Elder Dennis Chandler to anoint the child head at this time. the child on the word of God. I'm going to ask everyone in the room to stand with me. And I'm going to ask everyone to reach their hands to this area. Gracious and eternal Father, Father, as this family, Lord, has given this child back unto you, Lord, we ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to watch over this child. Lord God, we ask you to keep him with health, strength, Lord God, that he can raise up to be a man after your own heart. Lord, we ask you to protect him, Lord God. Shield him from hurt, harm, and danger, Father. Watch over him, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around him. Lord God, that he can raise up, Lord God, and be a blessing academically, Lord God. He can be a blessing, Lord God, academically, Lord God, that you watch over him, Lord God, and shield him, Lord God, that he be a blessing to his mama, he be a blessing to his daddy. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, Lord God, to bless the family, to have provision for this child, that they want for nothing, Lord God. Lord God, that every need the family has is met, Lord God, that this family, Lord God, to be able to bless, Lord God, the bond, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you, right Right now we submit back to him Lord God for who you have given unto us Lord Lord God we lift him up before you Lord we give him to you because you Lord God are the creator of all things and we ask you now to bless him shield him cover him let your angels Lord God be around him from this day forward and beyond and we give you praise we give you honor in Jesus' holy name, let the church say amen, amen, and amen. And I present to you today, Devon Isaiah Lee, to Appleton Pentecostal Assembly. Now, 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 what do you got to say to that? Amen, amen. We present him back now into the hands of Lady Raglan, into the ministry, back to Minister Hilson, to Minister Eric, Godmother, to the Godmother, to the Grandmother, back to the hands of the Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise on today. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, let's give them a hug, amen, the family, amen.
Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for young Devon. Amen. He is the second baby who's been consecrated, a dedicated, amen, to Appleton Pentecostal Assembly. Come on, let's give God some praise, amen. First was Judah, amen, and now we got Devon, amen, Isaiah. Come on now, elite, hallelujah. We thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing, amen. Do me a favor now, amen. We know the hour has been spent, but we got a word, a quick word. Turn with me to the book of John. Turn with me to the book of John. Deacon Morgan, get ready. Amen. In the book of John, chapter number 20, verse starting at verse 19, I want to first, before we continue, thank all the visitors that has joined us and been with us today, and we truly know and believe that you will come again, and what? Again, amen, and I thank the Lord, amen, for all the brothers that yesterday that was out for breakfast, amen, and we chopped it up and had men's real talk, amen, and dealing with the mysteries, as well as the women went on an outing yesterday, come on now, women, amen, went golfing, amen, in 90 degree weather, hallelujah, I said I would have threw in a towel 10 minutes, amen, I would have washed them from the car, but thank the Lord for the women, amen. Amen. So John chapter 20, starting at verse number 19. If you can stand, please stand. If you cannot, I understand. And it begins to read. It says, then the same day at the evening before the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Somebody said they were scared. A fear of the Jews. That's right. They were not scared, maybe scared. And, and so they came to Jesus and stood, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when they had so said, he showed unto them his hands and he showed unto them his side. And then said the disciples, Glad when they saw that it was the Lord. I want to pause right there because I I want you to put your attention on that very text for me. Then, then, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. I want y'all to just pause again because I want you to understand. They was glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you. As Father have sent me, so send I you. And when he has said this, the he, the, he has said this, he, brought, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whosoever sins you remit, then you are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, but Thomas, but Thomas was one of the disciples called Dynamis, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto Thomas, we have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except shall I see his hands and the prints of the, the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, somebody say eight days. Eight days, just for you can know, eight days mean a new beginning, a new. Seven represents complete. On the eighth day, it means a new. After eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them this time. And then came Jesus into the door being shut and stood in the midst of them, stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you and then said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither my hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but what? But believing, be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my Jesus said unto Thomas, Because thou hast seen me. 
thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet they believe. You may have a seat. You may have a seat. You have a main seat. Blessed are them that has not seen, but yet they believe. It is interesting, according to the text, and we're gonna be, we're gonna distrapulate the text in a minute here. But I just want to talk to us for another for a minute. When Paul, when Jesus told them to go to the other side, I just had to bring that up. That ain't gonna be the topic on today. I just had to bring it up, Lady Raglan, because I talked about going to the other side on a couple of weeks, and I came in and stood in the room today. And when I stood in the room today, Elder Chandler, I looked up and I seen something different. I said, why is Ely is sitting on this side and why is um, Brother Michael Nim sitting on this side? Because I came to the realization to realize uh, that some folks are saying, uh, I need to still maybe get to the other side uh, because if I've been sitting on this side for so long, uh, maybe the blessing might fall on me if I sit on this side. Uh, sometimes folks got to understand understand and get it uh, that sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone uh, so this lets me know that there's some folks that say I have to do something different sometime uh, to get to the place where God can bless me uh, to anoint me uh, and maybe to appoint me uh, I can't always do what I've always done uh, so I just had to point that out uh, it's good to see folks is really ready to stretch and go to the other side uh, but let me get to the text I just had to point it out so to get to the text, we know then uh, that we, I want to deal today with a guy by the name of Thomas. Uh, and so a lot of people call Thomas Doubting Thomas. Uh, but I want to deal with Thomas today uh, because Thomas is unique. Uh, Thomas is not unique by no other standard, uh, but everyone says he's doubting. Uh, but I don't believe Thomas is a doubting Thomas. Uh, but I believe there's something different about Thomas uh, because we understand uh, that that everybody deals with doubt. Everybody struggle at time with a thing that's called doubt. I don't care how super spiritual you think you are. Your super spirituality doesn't mean anything to your trials and your testing. Uh, everybody struggles with doubt. Uh, every now and then, uh, you doubt what God has called you to do. Uh, you doubt, so the point is, uh, the only reason why we have doubt a lot of times, uh, because we got to step out on the thing that's called faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things. You can't see it. Because I can't see it, then it's hard for me to believe it. Come on out, brothers. Brothers, come on out. Yeah, bring them, bring them. And who's back there? Open that up for me. Slide it over a little bit. So there's some faith list folks, but the problem is folks have allowed their faith to define their God. And I said that some of us continue to put God in a what? And this ain't no three card Molly either. Uh uh. Some of us, based upon how we believe, is based upon how I mature based upon how God will use me. If my faith is in this box, that means my box is pretty small, isn't it? And if my box is pretty small, then therefore I only view my God 
this small. Because the problem I have, I say I believe until I find I introduce to a trial. I say I believe until a trial come my way, but then I don't believe my God is able. Then there's people that may have a bigger box. They see God a little bit bigger than this person see the God, but yet and still they only believe that God is able to do a certain piece. One person, two types of people. Then you have this third type of person. This other third type of person believes stronger than this person and believes stronger than that person, but yet and still, they're still in the what? No matter how I look at it, I continue to put God still in a because I don't, I might think that I'm better than this person because he put God in a box at this level. But just because I got faith in this level, I still see God still in a. And because I still see God in a box, then therefore I don't think that the, I only believe the ceiling only goes so. So then therefore, I stay confined or I keep my God confined to this box. I keep my God confined to that box. I keep my God confined to that box. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for in the, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But guess what we've done with God? We say we have faith, but in reality, we don't have faith, we have experience. Ooh, somebody said, Pastor, what you talking about? Your experience has defined your faith. Your experience of God has allowed you to put him in the box. Because you don't really believe God can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask or think. Because you say, well, I never seen met God at another level besides this level. So then if somebody tells you to do something out of the norm, I never do it. Because I can't see that far. My experience never showed me that. So then therefore my experience only showed me this much. So then, therefore, I'm stuck. Anybody ever been stuck before? Is there people ever tried to feel like they was going to go far this time, but every now and then they find themselves falling back down? And then they say, I'm going to really do good this time, but then they go back up, then they go back down. And then they act like they had on a slinky or whatever. They just sitting there going like, acting like they tigger, bouncing up and down. And that's because they just continue to bounce and hit their head and go right back, hit the ceiling and go back up. Because you never release God. You never released them. You've been looking at God from your eyes, not from who he is. You have subject God to you instead of you being subject to God. And because of that, God is saying, I'm looking for somebody who got some tub type of faith. See, the tub type of faith, you will have God faith and then you will step in God. And when you step into God, you don't have no lid over you. God is completely surrounding you and you don't have a lid at all because when you step in God, God will take you to another place. He will take you to a higher height. He'll take you to a deeper depth. He'll take you, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for you, for his people because you got to get yourself out of the box. Get your God out of the box and get back and like say 
saying I believe, but you really don't believe. I know you don't really believe, because if you really believe, you'll step into territory you never stepped in before. If you really believe, you'll go places you never been before. If you really believe, you'll stop trying to let everybody tell you how to serve your God. You'll serve him like you know how to serve him. You'll worship him like you know how to worship him. You'll praise him like you know how to praise him. You'll give him the glory like you know how to give him the glory. Because you're not in a box. You're not putting him in a box. You're giving him the praise. I'm in him. He said, if I abide in you and you abide in me, greater works than I've done, this is Jesus saying, greater works you will do. But a lot of folks acting like they don't even believe. They continue to put them in a box. That's the problem of the disciples. The disciples at that time, they came and they begin to look for Jesus. And as they begin to look for him, uh, the Bible said they were scared. I told you to repeat, I'm scared. Jesus walked with them for three years. Showed them all he can do. Showed them all the power. And when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he said, you're not doing this for me. You're doing it for they can believe that I got all power. I'm doing things just for other folks to believe. I'm walking on water, not because I just feel like walking on water, but I'm walking on water so they can believe. I'm doing the things. I'm healing the sick, not just because I want to heal the sick. I'm healing the sick so they can know I can believe now. Everything Jesus did, he did it for you to believe. When he got baptized, he said, it's time for all righteousness to be fulfilled. I'm doing it because you to believe. I need to increase your faith. I need to increase you who I am. I need you to see me for who I am. I want to take you to another place. But then Jesus left. Jesus left. And they was scared. And they hid themselves in a the room. Some of y'all are running around scared, but you're saying you believe. Fear will try your faith. Fear will try your faith. Ooh. Peter was cutting folks' ears off. But when Jesus left, he was scared. You say you believe until you get the doctor report. You say you believe until your husband starts acting crazy. You say you believe when your kid's doing good, but when your kid's acting up, you don't know where to turn to. You say you believe while you got the good job, but then the job left. Now you're looking dumbfounded, sick in your mind, and don't worry about how you're going to pay your bills. When you say you believe until things happen, but the trying of your faith, don't you know you got to learn that there's going to be some things in your life that's going to see, let you see what box you got your God in. There's some things in your life that's going to make you look and say, which box is he in? Which box is he in? Because there's going to be some things that make you say, I don't know if I can make it through it. There's going to be some things in your life to make you question if you saved or not. Therefore, don't get it twisted. There's nothing wrong with Thomas. Thomas was all right. You said he doubted. not say he's all right. Why is he all right? Because when Jesus showed up on the scene, when they were scared, watch this. They showed up. Jesus showed up. He said, peace be unto you. They probably looked and said, who was that? And the Bible said Jesus did something to them. What did he do to them? No, nope, he didn't open their eyes. What did he do to them? He showed them. He showed them his hands. Then he showed them 
his side. And then they was glad because it was the Lord. They seen the Lord. They weren't glad that he was the Lord until he showed them. Look at the text. It wasn't until he showed them. So when they told Thomas, Thomas said, if he showed it to you, why can't he show it to me? Some folks better get that word. Just because God told somebody and showed up in somebody else's life. Some folks need to learn that I need him to show up in my life. I hear what you're saying, but I need the personal relationship. I need God to show up in my life like he showed up in your life. That's why Thomas said, if I, if, if you seen his hands and you seen his side, then y'all believed. Then I want to believe like you believed. I want to have that type of encounter. I want to wait till I see his hands. I want to wait till I see his side. I want to see the nails in his feet, the holes in his hands. I want to see it, because then if I see it, how you see it, then your testimony is no greater than my testimony. If he showed up in your life, then why can't he show up in my life like he showed up in your life? If he delivered you, why won't he deliver me too? If he blessed your marriage, I want my marriage blessed too. Uh, if he healed your kids, uh, why can't he heal my kids too? Uh, I want to have an encounter with the Lord uh, like you had an encounter with the Lord. Uh, I want to know him uh, just how you know him. Uh, I want to get him out my box. Uh, I want to loosen the doors to the box. Uh, I want to open it up. Uh, and I want the box to be open. Uh, but one thing you have to learn, uh, when Jesus showed up, uh, Jesus didn't talk to nobody else. He walked right over to Thomas and said, Thomas, I want you to see my side. I want you to see my hands. And Thomas just bowed his head and said, my Lord and my God, I don't need to thresh it in there. I don't even need to touch it. Just seeing you was good enough for me. Just seeing you. Some folks got to understand that if you just need to see the Lord, just to see the Lord show up in your life, just see the Lord in your life, life uh, in your circle uh, that should be good enough for you uh, and that's now I understand uh, according to the book of James uh, when James said the trying of your faith uh, it worketh patience uh, that means that what God is saying uh, you if you're gonna say you believe uh, you don't know what you believe uh, until you get some trying faith uh, unless your faith get tried uh, a lot of folks want to say they believe uh, when it's sitting there comfortable uh, when everything's going good uh, but do you ever been able to believe uh, when things wasn't going good in your life uh, were you able to believe uh, when your life was messed up uh, broke busted and disgusted uh, were you able to believe uh, when things was going crazy in your life uh, was you able to believe uh, when you didn't know where to turn uh, when you was drugged up uh, smoked out uh, Manipulated, uh, walking crazy, uh, losing your mind. Uh, were you able to believe uh, when God show up? Uh, that's why you got to tell somebody uh, the trying of my faith. Uh, it gave me some patience. Uh, and whilst that, Pastor Raglan, uh, we're going to go home now. Uh, the time is spent now. Uh, I got to go to another place. Uh, when I came home, uh, you got to understand uh, the devil came came in my life. Uh, he tried my faith. Uh, he tried to mess with my marriage. Uh, but my marriage stood strong. Uh, he messed with my job. Uh, but my job stood strong. Uh, because he came in. Uh, he rushed in like a flood. Uh, but the Lord lifted up a standard. 
he lifted up a standard and now I can walk in victory and folks is scratching their head the devil is confused he's saying why are you sick of your body why are you still praising them why are your marriage is going bad but you're still praising them why are everything going crazy but you still gotta shout why everything look bad but you're still lifting them up let me help you out Job said although he slay me yet would I trust him I can be tried but I'm still gonna stand I can go through hell but I'm still gonna stand things may come in but I'm still gonna stand cause I know the Lord is on my side I'm gonna stand and win When I get tired of standing, I'm gonna yet stand some more. When I wanna give up, I'm gonna praise them more. When I wanna throw in the towel, I'm gonna look to somebody and say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Give God the praise. The devil, he tried to take us out. He tried to get you to throw in the towel, but he didn't know you got trying faith. He didn't know you got power, power. You got Holy Ghost power. He didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know. Folks still confused. When God showed up to Thomas, Thomas just fell to the ground and began to give him praise. When God show up, I don't care what trial you went through, uh, they were scared at first. They ran from the Jews at first. But the Bible told me uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, when the power of the Lord came in, uh, they was all filled uh, with one accord. Uh, and the Bible said uh, they went down where the Jews was at. Uh, they went down where the devil was at. Uh, and said, I ran one time. Uh, I may have ran two times. Uh, I may have ran three times. Uh, but baby, I ain't running no more. Uh, I got I got faith! I got faith! I got faith! The devil thought he could contain your faith. The devil thought he could keep you in the box. He thought you were going to keep your God in the box. But uh-uh, uh-uh. That's what he did to Job. He said, if I touch his body, if I touch his finances, if I touch his finances, he'll curse you in your face. God said, touch his finances. He made them broke, busted, and disgusted. He said, but if I touch his kids, he'll curse you then. God said, touch his kids. He touched his kids. Job still standing there like. Financial issues, Joe Black. Kids going to jail, kids dying, Joe Steele. I believe the more issues Job had, the bigger his praise was. 
the more issues Job had, the biggest his praise was. So whatever your issue is, just open your mouth and praise him. Lisa, he said, you know, you, I touched his family. I touched his money. I bet as I touched his life, his health, he'll curse you. God said, go ahead and touch his life. And he's still going to praise me. He still won't curse me. The Bible said Job got sick. Words all over his body. Not eating. Fatigue. And the Bible said Job was still. And to the point, Joe's wife looked at him and said, you broke, we don't got kids, you sick, just curse your God and die. And Job looked at her, woo! Y'all talking about y'all had marriage issues, woo! Relationship issues. Can you imagine your wife telling you to curse God and die? Job looked at his wife eye to eye and said, you sound like one of them silly women. If I'm going to bless him for the good he gave, I'm going to bless him for when I don't get. I need somebody that says I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my mind. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him.
I think of Jesus, what he's done for me. When I think of Jesus, how he set me free. I can dance, 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 d
nobody know what God has brought you through? This brother called me all the way from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and said, I watched online. And he got a fiance, right, Felicia? And he said, I watched you online in Sheboygan. He said, I'm coming because my faith needs to be restored. Because the enemy is trying to knock me down. But the enemy should have known he got trying faith. And he said, I want to go down in Jesus' name. He traveled all the way from Sheboygan, Wisconsin to get to the house of the Lord to go down in Jesus' name. 